We were all beginners at row cycling at one point. No one was born an expert at it. Do you remember how confusing everything was when you first discovered road cycling? The kit, the bike, the gears. It's not a simple sport like say running where you just need a pair of trainers. But what are some of the most confusing things about road cycling? Let's take a look. First up, obviously the bike. When you discover cycling, you thought, oh, I'll buy a bike. You start looking and you soon discover there are so many different kinds of bikes, like a lot of bikes to choose from. Where do you even start? You've got road bikes, you've got aero road bikes, you've got time trial bikes, you've got cyclocross bikes, you've got gravel bikes, you've got a fixie, you've got a truck bike. There are so many. How do you choose? All bikes have different benefits depending on what discipline you do. Say, if you want to climb mountains all day, choose a lightweight bike. If you want to do 10 miles as fast as you can, choose a time trial bike. And if you want to look really cool, get a fixie. You want to think about the type of riding you're going to be doing and then go from there. And well, if you want to be an all rounder and try a bit of everything, well, you're going to have a lot of bikes. But really, you can ride any type of bike on the road. That is a great thing about it. Geometry of bikes. How do we work out the size we need? And then it gets even more confusing when each brand's geometry is slightly different. Do I need a 51 or do I need a 56? I guess some brands have a small, medium and large. I guess that makes things a slight bit easier, but then I guess it's a little less accurate. Bikes are often measured by their seat tube length, but this does differ from brand to brand. Some may choose to do the top tube length from where the top tube meets the seat tube. How do you even begin to decide what type of tires you need when there are so many different ones out there with so many different numbers on them? In professional cycling, tires can be the difference between winning and losing. Professional teams will constantly be changing the tires depending on the course and depending on the weather. Then you get to tire pressure. How do you choose the exact right tire pressure for you? And then you have different tire pressure for the dry, the wet, different terrain. Another big topic here at GCN is rim brakes or disc brakes. What's the difference between the both? They both help you slow down and stop, but which one's better? With rim brakes, the stopping force is applied by calipers on the outer edge of the rim. And then with disc brakes, they move the braking surface from the rim to the rotor. Disc brakes haven't long come into the road scene, but you will see most of the professional teams using them. Like everything, there are pros to cons to rim brakes and disc brakes. But if you ask me, I'll always choose disc brakes. If you start racing competitively, some people will have a race bike and then a winter slash training bike. But why? Why do you need two bikes? And sometimes these bikes will be exactly the same. Well, most pro cyclists will have a race bike and a training bike. So when they jump on their race bike, it'll feel like new. It'll sometimes have better components and they'll work better because they haven't had the wear from them riding it every single day for hours and hours. I remember when I first started cycling, I was baffled by the numbers on the chain ring and cassettes. What did 53, 39 and 1128 mean? What was compact and semi-compact? Was anyone else baffled by this or was it just me? I soon learned that those numbers equaled the amount of teeth on the chain ring or cassette. It all makes perfect sense now. Little secret for you, I didn't even like coffee before I started riding bikes, but now I just can't even start a ride without having a coffee. And if I meet a new friend for a ride, it would be rude not to stop for a cheeky coffee and a cake. It's such a cyclist thing. And I think that's what's so great about this sport. People from other sports must think we are so lazy. They probably think we spend more time at the cafe than we do riding our bikes. Us cyclists have our own lingo that only we understand and no one else in the whole entire world knows what we're on about. Until you've lived and breathed cycling, you still might not understand this slang. Bonking, Rotopia, Zwifting, Squeeze, Half Wheeling, FTP, What's Per Kilo, CDA, Bidon, Domestique, Peloton, Gruppetto, Average Watts, Musette, DS1, yeah! 
what does it all mean? Bonking. No, it's not what you get up to after hours. It's far uglier than that. It's when you completely run out of energy at mid-ride. It is absolutely awful and I do not recommend it to anyone. Next up, half wheeling. Now this is very infuriating. It's when someone, when you're on a group ride, decides to ride a tiny bit quicker than you and goes half a wheel in front of you. Now this is very annoying and it's very rude, so please don't do it. And if you've been half wheeled before, you will know exactly what I'm on about. Just don't be the person half wheeling. Next up, bidon. Now this basically means water bottle, but bidon sounds a little bit cooler, so we say bidon. And last but not least, we have gruppetto. Now this is actually an Italian one and it means little group. Another confusing thing about cycling is clipless pedals. Trying to get your head around, you have this cleat on the bottom of your shoe that you clip onto your pedal. And then when you go on your first ride with these new shoes and new pedals and you constantly panic every three seconds, what if I need to unclip and stop and I can't unclip my foot and I fall right over? I missed the beanbag. And then the fact that clipless pedals are called clipless pedals, but you actually clip into them. Hmm. And the most confusing one of them all, when you realize the price tag of that new bike you want. Okay, okay, so cycling can be a confusing sport, but really it's quite simple. Just grab a bike and get out there. It doesn't matter what you wear, what you ride, how you do it, what words you use. Just don't be a half wheeler. Get out there and have fun. Have we missed anything? What did you find the most confusing when you first got into road cycling? Let us know in the comment section below.